We are 28 days to the general elections and the build-up is not letting off. While the electorate continue the search for their voting tool, that's the almighty permanent voters card, and the politicians are chasing votes in various ingenious ways, the security apparatus of the nation is looking determined to see all lost grounds won back. Good evening. Welcome to Nigeria 2015. I am Neota Ibe. The current roundup round of stepped-up military offensive against the insurgents comes amidst a deepening sense of despair with the handling of the crisis, which explains why Nigerians greeted with mixed reactions. The battle against Boko Haram has been on for a while. Various government leaders and organizations have proposed a series of solutions aimed at combating their ongoing insurgency. From military interventions to inaugurating a dialogue committee to declaring a state of emergency, and a ceasefire deal, and now we've got a multilateral approach. For the second time in her checkered history, the intervention of Russia in Nigeria's security challenges has, proved a cru has proven crucial, crucial in dealing with difficult situations. First was the three-year civil war that's between 1967 and 1970, and presently the supply of the right arms and ammunition that have helped to turn the tide of the war against the Boko Haram terrorists in the northeastern part of the country. In the last seven days, the Nigerian military and the country's neighbors have recorded series of victories against Boko Haram insurgents, recapturing town after town. Well, our correspondents along the way will come in to tell us what's happening in their locality. Hopefully, we'll have Yemi Kosoko from Just Plata State and Paz Angbo in Benue State to tell us what's going on in their locality. Now, for you back at home, our web team has provided several platforms for you to air your views on the program. First, you can tweet at us using the hashtag Nigeria2015. You can use the Twitter handles at the bottom of your screen, at Channel TV and at Neota Igwe. If you have further comments or longer questions, to do send us a mail to Nigeria2015 at channelstv.com. You can also send us pictures or videos of events concerning the elections. Use our eyewitness platform. All you need to do is just download the Channel TV app for Android, iOS, or Windows devices. Swipe and follow the instructions. Now, back here in the studio joining us to discuss tonight. From our studios in Abuja is Dr. Udenta Udenta, who will be joining us via Skype. Thank you for joining us. Mr. Bisi Adebu, a legal practitioner, is here in our legal studio and is a member of the All Progressives Congress. Thank you for joining us. Thanks for having me. And Brigadier General William Bene, retired, is joining us also from Abuja in the course of the discourse. But first of all, let's do a quick run through the reactions that have trailed the recent military gains in the northeastern part of the country. Well, those slides will pop up as we move along. Yes, indeed. One, a military intervention. We talked about this earlier about some of the things that happened in the course of the approach to tackling the insurgency, military interventions, inauguration of a committee that went about the country seeking to create a platform for dialogue, how that turned out. We also had the peace deal that was purportedly brokered, but which did not hold after all. And the deployment of local hunters, that's a.k.a. the civilian JTF, that was another approach to tackle the insurgency situation. And finally, we have the multilateral approach where we have the neighbors joining in the fight against the insurgents. Now, what has the international community said concerning the situation in the northeastern part of the country? This is what they had to say. All of them, that the leaders of the Central African Republic says, we will assist Nigeria in the fight against the insurgency in the northeastern part of the country. Now, that was one deal that many Nigerians and indeed the entire world looked forward to, especially when the African Union and the United Nations threw their weight behind that agreement with their African leaders to support Nigeria in the war against the insurgents in the northeastern part of the country. Now, what are the issues that have emerged after that declaration? A never-ending search for Shekau has begun following the victories being won, being gotten by the military in the northeastern part, socioeconomic factor, and then the political factor. These are all the issues that are arising from the war against the insurgency in the northeastern part of the country. Now, what has the 
What has developed after these approaches to tackle insurgents? The suicide attacks seem to be getting more vigorous. We now have, uh, from the security apparatus, the Boko Haram members have decided to go into the town disguised as members of the society, sometimes as little children. You've, some of them have been arrested, dressed like women in some parts of the country, and there have been some abductions also of citizens in the northeastern part of the country. These are dimensions that have come up in the insurgency war. But what is it that has boosted the morale of the Nigerian troops, and indeed the troops in the northeastern part of the country? One, a visit by President Goodluck Jonathan on the 26th of February to Baga and Mubi. Now, in that report, we saw the president have a conversation one-on-one -on -one with some of the soldiers and those of some people who looked at the, the president in his approach to the troops on ground. You could see that he was actually laughing and tapping some of them on the chest. And some people wondered, is this right for a president to do or is it just to show the soldiers on ground that, hey, I feel your pain and I'm part of what you're doing here. These are some of the things that the president had to do that boosted the morale of the soldiers on ground, special promotion for the soldiers, and even the, for those who had passed on a posthumous promotion. That's coming from the chief of army staff. He said this on the 25th of February. That's what's going to happen to the soldiers' promotions for everyone that has been a part of the war against the insurgents. And then the purchase of sophisticated armaments, specialized training of the troops in guerrilla warfare as well. These are some of the things that have come in to boost the morale of the, in, of the troops on ground. Now let's look at some of the things that have been said about the entire situation. The president says, I and other Nigerians are proud of your bravery. He said this to the troops on ground. The Nigerians are proud of what they're doing, and those casting aspersions on Nigeria's military do not understand exactly what they're going through. That was credited to the president. Next person that has spoken is the chief of army staff, Lieutenant General Kenneth Minima, who says, I urge you to keep the tempo up, striving hard to record more successes. I encourage Nigerians to support their military. That's the chief of army staff talking to the men on ground, again to boost their morale. As some will say, the kind of warfare they've had to face here is not the kind they are used to. I mean, the, the Nigerian troops have been part of peacekeeping operations around the world, and they have been said to be of top-notch quality, well-trained and disciplined, and always delivering on their responsibility. Again, that's the comment of the chief of army staff to Nigerians. Now, what has been the multilateral approach? Those that have donated or contributed men to the war against insurgents, Chad has sent about 2,000, about 500 soldiers from, the, from Chad have joined in the war against the insurgents, 700 troops from Niger and 400 troops from Cameroon joining the men, the Nigerian military on ground in the fight against the insurgents. So, what has been the gains so far? A recapture of various towns that have been lost to the insurgents. One of those towns has, was Baga. And when Baga was attacked, there was a lot of hue and cry across the country and indeed around the world about the manner of approach that the insurgents used there, killing civilians and dislodging the military base there. But that is no longer the news as Baga has been won back by the Nigerian military and indeed working with their international counterparts. They've won back Baga and that stronghold of the insurgents has been recaptured. What are the other things that have come out of this? Some of the pains. Worst attack of Boko Haram's has been that in six year insurgency has been on Baga. That has been the description that some people have given to the attack on Baga town. They called it the worst attack of Boko Haram insurgency in the country. Now, the question many people have asked before now has been, is it possible that within the six weeks of the postponement of the elections that the Nigerian military can gain back the grounds that have been lost? Is it possible that this momentum that they've got now can be sustained? Well, we're hoping that tonight our 
panelists will be able to answer some of these questions. But first of all, let's hear the report of the president's visit to the troops in Meidugui, in Mubi and Baga, precisely. Doctor, good luck, Ebele Jonathan! The combat-ready president and commander-in-chief may have had three things in mind while visiting the war fronts in Mubi Adabawa State and Baga in Borono State. <laughs> Firstly, to commend the gallant soldiers for the able way they recaptured territories formerly in the hands of the insurgents, a proof that they can protect the territorial integrity of Nigeria and shame those who had concluded that it was impossible. For this time, we didn't have enough material to confront the terrorists. But now, at least, we receive significant number of uh, weapons that has been uh, improving the, the, the operations. We are pleased with you, what you are doing. We we'll continue to encourage you. The whole world appreciates the strength of the Nigerian army because of your peacekeeping operations. Because of the Nigerian army, we were able to stabilize a number of West African and indeed African countries. Because the world was wondering what was happening to Nigeria. These are the Nigerian soldiers we know that Boko Haram told them to ransom for a very long time. But things have changed now. We are very happy with what we are doing. How to continue to reinforce them with necessary equipment and logistics to complete the mission, as well as their welfare, including rewards for the soldiers when it is all said and done, especially with families of soldiers who lost their lives in this battle, is next on his mind. But be rest assured that anything that is due you, you will surely get it. And all of you who have shown gallantry will be rewarded according to the traditions of the armed forces and according to the rules and regulations governing the operations and, of course, the goodwill of Nigerians and their country. The soldiers' response was reassuring as they chant gallantly. Lastly, the president is glad with the return of the Emir of Mubi. He promised him and other displaced persons who are returning of speedy resettlement. We are here for a tour also to look at the level of devastation and to what extent the federal government would assist to cushion the effects, especially as we rehabilitate our people and we'll come back. But the main thing, the key thing, is to make sure that we flush the Boko Haram out of Nigeria and will not allow them to go into any other country. Collectively, Nigeria, Chad, Niger, Cameroon, and then we'll make sure that the story of Boko Haram will come to an end and very soon. The president was accompanied on the inspection by service chiefs, spent several hours taking area view of the towns recently recaptured just to reassure himself that of a fact the Nigerian soldiers are equal to the task they have undertaken to safeguard lives and property in Nigeria. Chukuma Onrekusi, Channels Television News.